Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this May 10th, 2017 day on our calendar. And this week I've been doing shows uh, remembering Pastor Tony Alamo, who passed away on May 2nd. Uh, All you have to do is Google uh, the Investigative Journal. Uh, Greg interviews Tony Alamo. You can get stories going back over a decade regarding this travesty of justice. Uh, This man did not deserve to die in prison. Uh, The trial was a frame job of the highest degree, and we've presented evidence to show that. It shows nothing more than there's a double standard of justice in this country. And the people that tell the truth, tell the truth about the hidden agenda, about the one world global government on its way, about the Vatican's role in this, about the Vatican being the Antichrist, as the Protestant reformers did, will suffer the same fate as those during the Protestant Reformation did. And the reason the Jesuits are still here doing their dirty work is because that's what they were assigned to do back during the Protestant Reformation, and they haven't stopped four or five hundred years later. Pastor Alamo talked about this over 40 years. And I think I've had, I laid out facts on both sides. I had to look at the story as a journalist. Was the government telling the truth? Was the Alamo ministry telling the truth? And I came to the conclusion that the government, in this case, led by, uh, you know, the Vatican, they're just basically the Vatican minions working for them to protect the, the Pope and uh, protect this one world order coming to being. I found that the facts on the side of the government were so flimsy that no reasonable prosecutor would ever bring this case unless this was a frame job. And you can go back to all my shows and, uh, you know, you can uh, re- look at this this story from both sides. Now, I've run shows all week remembering Tony, and uh, today what I want to do and I want to spend. That's why I don't want to talk too long here, because I can always come back tomorrow and get really in depth on the trial, the frame job, and many, many other things. All of the slanderous statements made and showing how there's really no. Uh, it was basically a uh, fake news at the highest level from uh, going on for 40 years. And what I wanted to do is, though, uh, last week I started to play. Uh, the Pope's Secrets. Tony wrote this in 1983, and I only got a couple minutes into it, but this will tell you uh, why he was persecuted and why this ministry still is to this day. But they're going on. They're still passing out literature. They're still getting a lot of hits on their uh, over 300,000, 400,000 hits a week on their uh, uh, website. And they're still spreading the word, as Tony did, right up until his death, while he was spreading the word while he was still in prison. But he wrote The Pope's Secrets, and it's a video presentation of the popular and prophetic expose that was written by him in 1983. Millions and millions of copies sent out, and this was one of the big reasons they were after him. The Inquisition, the Holy Wars, the Civil War, the World Wars, the Lincoln assassination, the Kennedy assassination, global terrorism, the ecumenical movement, and much more is explained in the light of Scripture in this video, and it's... uh, narrated by Bert Krantz of the ministry. And some of the comments are, it's one of the best exposés of the Vatican that I've seen. Uh, Very informative. And it pulls the uh, cover off the demonic Vatican. And this was, you got to remember, this was done in 1983. And if you listen to it, it's as if it was written yesterday. So before I go on and talk the whole show away, let's play The Pope's Secrets by Tony Alamo. Or the IRS, FBI... U.S. Department of Labor, the Mafia, and labor unions, part of the Vatican? Is the Pope the super boss of all government agencies, as well as the Vatican? The Pope's Secrets, by Tony Alamo. This literature was written in 1983. The 
Vatican is posing as Snow White, but the Bible says that she's a prostitute, the great whore, a cult. Revelation 19.2 She uses government agency branches in every country, including the United States, as her vicious little dwarfs. The more power and control she gets in government, the more she will fade into the background in her snow white disguise, so that government will be used and blamed for all her evil deeds. Reason To enforce laws that harass, malign, destroy, and censor everyone and every idea that is not Roman Catholic, so she can sit as the satanic queen, the big whore. Because of her age-old desire to control the world government and church, the serpent-like Vatican has infested the world and the U.S. government with so many of her zealous, highly trained, and dedicated Jesuit devotees that she now controls the United Nations, which she created. The White House, Congress, every state, federal, civic, and social government agency, including the U.S. Department of Labor, the IRS, the FBI, the Supreme Court, judicial systems, the armed forces, state, federal, and other police, also the international banking and federal reserve systems, called the Illuminati and Agentur, labor unions, the mafia, and most of the heavyweight news media. This cult, the Vatican, is very close to replacing our U.S. Constitution with her one-world satanic canon laws of death to the heretic, anyone who is not Roman Catholic. General Lafayette, President George Washington's most respected aide and general, prophetically stated, If the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed, they will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult's clergy. Today we see the climax of detailed plans given in excerpts from a speech given nearly 50 years ago in Australia by Roman Catholic Archbishop Gilroy. The Roman Catholic motto is ourselves alone for our fellow Roman Catholics. We must defeat all heretics, non-Roman Catholics, at the ballot box. The Holy Father states that negative tactics are fatal. The demands of the Holy Father, the Pope, are that the public services should be 100% Roman Catholic soon. Care must be taken that no suspicion may be raised when Roman Catholics are secretly given more government jobs than Protestants, Jews, and other heretics. Multi-millions of people have been slaughtered by the Vatican, thus saith the Lord. Revelation 18.24 History bears record to this fact. During the Roman Catholic Inquisition in Europe, 68 million people were tortured, maimed, and murdered by this huge sect. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre accounted for the butchering of as many as 100,000 Protestants. Abraham Lincoln blamed the papacy for the Civil War in these words. This war would never have been possible without the sinister and secretive influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to Popery that we now see our land reddened with the blood of her noblest sons. Lincoln added, I am for liberty of conscience in its noblest, broadest, and highest sense, but I cannot give liberty of conscience to the Pope and to his followers the papists, so long as they tell me through their councils, theologians, and canon laws that their conscience orders them to burn my wife, strangle my 
children and cut my throat when they find their opportunity. Because of Abraham Lincoln's many exposés of the Vatican, he was put to death, just as he foretold. Yes, assassinated by the Jesuits under Rome's instructions. The Vatican hasn't changed since Mr. Lincoln's time. JFK's Fatal Mistake When John F. Kennedy was asked by the Vatican, Are you going to go along with the Roman canon law or the U.S. Constitution? Mr. Kennedy answered them by saying, The U.S. Constitution. This was President Kennedy's fatal mistake. His assassination was ordered by Rome then planned and carried out by Jesuits, just as President Lincoln's was. Anyone who knew too much about Mr. Kennedy's assassination was taken care of, too. When America cried out for an investigation, Chief Justice Earl Warren, a member of the Vatican's secretive Knights of Columbus, was recruited to do the investigation. He did a lot of double-talking and shuffling, as he was supposed to, and then, after a sufficient period of time, closed the investigation. Like the Pope says, negative actions are fatal. Remember that President Kennedy was a great admirer and student of Abraham Lincoln, and knew what Mr. Lincoln knew. War II, with its casualties of over 30 million deaths, 6 million Jews, the Holocaust, was conjured up and sponsored by the Vatican. Hitler, Mussolini, and Franco were all members of this sect, the Roman Catholic cult. To win the world, not for Christ, but for the Vatican, the Antichrist. The turmoil in Central and South America the tyranny under Jesuit-trained Castro in Cuba and throughout the Caribbean, and the terrorism in Lebanon and Ireland today are the Vatican's handiwork. Now can you see why God calls the Roman Catholic cult the mother of every abomination on earth? Revelation 17.5 The Vatican knew that after World War II, many people were wise to the fact that the war was a Vatican Inquisition. So they had to use one of their famous diversionary tactics and open the John Birch Society to get everybody thinking and talking about communism, which the Vatican also sponsors, instead of the true culprit, the Vatican. This was a great success for them. The Vatican also sponsors every major terrorist group in the world. The reason for this is to keep people's thoughts on unexplainable, insane tragedies that their terrorist groups are committing, while the Vatican is busy undermining all governments of the world so they can have world dominion, papal power. When terrorist news hits, it is so shocking that it minimizes the news of the Vatican taking away the U.S. Constitution and of people being deprived of their religious freedoms, being jailed, schools and churches being closed. This is the real thing that the Vatican is after, them. world control of our religion and our government. The more insane, bizarre, unreasonable, and unexplainable the terrorism is, the better. The Vatican's heavyweight news media also keeps you busy thinking about it all. Now that they are exposed with their modus operandi, they will soon, with their media and the President of the United States, who just joined them, be the driving force of a campaign to stop all this terrorism that they have created themselves, to make everyone believe that they are good and godly, and that they could have never sponsored anything like this. Update, such as Terry Waite negotiating in Lebanon. 
Jim Jones, a Roman Catholic Jesuit deacon, posing as a Christian, was sacrificed, not with poison Kool-Aid, murdered along with his flock by the Vatican to make the world look narrowly and suspiciously upon innocent Christian retreats. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Proverbs 6, 16-19 all these things that God hates, the devilish Vatican is. Did you ever notice that with the Vatican controlled U.S. customs and immigration, we cannot get out of this country without going through the third degree? searches, radar, etc. But in the 1960s when Jesuit Vatican trained Timothy Leary led our nation's youth into drug addiction, immigration and customs seemed unable then, as they do now, to detect tens of thousands of pounds of narcotics and drugs entering into our once fair nation via the Mafia which launders all of its illicit, ill-gotten gain, all its black market money, through the Vatican. Maybe this is why President Abraham Lincoln said, I see a very dark cloud on America's horizon. And that dark cloud is coming from Rome. Look at what the Bible says about the Antichrist that caused all this corruption and shed all this blood. And I saw the woman, the Vatican, drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great amazement. Revelation 17, 6. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Revelation 18.7 These governments have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. That is one world government, state and federal, civic and social government agencies included, powered by Satan giving that power unto the Antichrist by carrying out her orders. Revelation 17, 13. These are some of the very last signs in the Bible's book of Revelation before Jesus comes back to earth again and time shall be no more. God destroyed the world by water, Sodom and Gomorrah by fire and brimstone. On both occasions, God sent messengers preaching the forthcoming doom. Today, God in his infinite mercy warns all Roman Catholics, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18.4 If you are one of God's people, obey the word by coming out of her. Why? Because to not do so is disobedience, and disobedience is the same as witchcraft. Many Vatican state and federal government agencies, such as the IRS, OSHA, and the U.S. Department of Labor, along with labor unions, have wonderfully destroyed the economic backbone of our country by harassing and forcing hundreds of businesses and industries into bankruptcy and out of business. This leaves millions of Americans out of work and hungry, while Vatican-run enterprises are not harassed at all, but they flourish, because they run the government agencies.
it sits. Look at what God says about the Antichrist when he will be thrown into hell. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man, the Antichrist, that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? Isaiah 14, 16, and 17. Feds okay Vatican slave labor camps. Just one of the Vatican's many multi-billion dollar enterprises is their liquor and wine slave labor camps, which have no labor problems whatsoever because they unlawfully use free labor. Thousands of Roman Catholic monks. These federal government agencies will not allow anyone else to enjoy the same privileges of volunteering our labor to God, our Father, and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, because we are all heretics, non-Roman Catholics. Yes, their enterprises do prosper with no harm or harassment, using free labor in their Christian brothers, LaSalle and Benedictine liquor and wine distilleries, slave labor camps, and in many others all the way from Napa Valley, California to New York State. The Vatican's IRS and U.S. Department of Labor now cross the constitutional dividing line of separation between church and state and in every way are attempting to destroy all fundamental Christian churches and schools. One way is by taking away their tax-exempt status. This anti-American, anti-U.S. Constitution organization, the IRS, however, has given tax-exempt status to all communist organizations in America under Internal Revenue Code 501c3. They have never made any attempt to take this status away from them. Note, up until 1987, all communist organizations were tax exempt. Now, because of my literature, they removed the tax exempt status for all communist parties. However, the Vatican communists are so entrenched in the government under the guise of Republicans and Democrats that they no longer need exemptions, not to mention the government grants that are given to their pseudo-charitable groups and multi-billion dollar government grants to parochial schools and other elite Catholic communist organizations. Rome's collection agency, the IRS, has also made sure that the Roman Catholic cult and all those affiliated with okay. the One World Church are the only religious organizations in the U.S. that don't have to pay property tax or even tax on their multi-billion dollar businesses. This is done under Section 892 of the Internal Revenue Code. The Vatican is the only religion that receives multi-millions of dollars of federal aid each year for their parochial schools. This comes out of your tax dollars. Like Archbishop Gilroy says, ourselves alone for fellow Roman Catholics, and we must defeat all heretics. Okay, I want to take a break. We're going to come back and uh, finish this up in the second half hour, at least get through uh, half of this. It's a pretty long article, and you can go to alamoministries.com and get the whole article and read it yourself. Uh, we'll be back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures? 
and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening The following, following program, program is legally dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the by Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command, command. but stand all people. people. Listen, Listen up, 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 and up, and you may just learn something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, we're back for the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this May 10th. And let's get back to the Pope's Secrets, written by Tony Alamo and narrated by Bert Krantz. The Vatican has used the Communist Party to help destroy the Russian Orthodox Churches, and she used the Nazi Party in her attempt to do away with the Jews and their synagogues, because the Vatican says that all others than themselves are heretics, non-Roman Catholics. IRS, Roman Cults Collection Agency. The Roman Catholic Jesuits started the international banking system called the Illuminati and the Agentur and blamed the Jews for this. Rome's motto is, he that holds the money bags runs the nations. The Vatican started all the wars, inquisitions, to rid the world of heretics, non-Roman Catholics, and then made loans for her banks to nations so they would have enough money to fight them. We foolishly permitted this cult's collection agency into our country, the IRS, which answers only to Rome. According to Gov.
God's law in the Bible. Every 50 years there should be a clearing of debts that can't be paid. A relief. This is called the year of Jubilee. Leviticus 25.10 Let's bump cultish Roman canon law of death and bondage and get back to God's law and His Son, Christ Jesus. Let's have a clearing, the year of Jubilee. These debts have been instigated by Satan, the Roman Catholic cult, to hurt us and to put us into financial bondage. We didn't start these wars. We didn't want these wars. We didn't borrow that money. So why should we have to suffer? These wars were all Roman Catholic inquisitions to mold the world into a one-world government, church, and media. At the One World Church Convention in Vancouver, some of our volunteers were shocked by the pro-homosexual booths and literature pro-witchcraft boots in literature, drunkenness and total ungodliness, which this universal, world's largest cult and sect exalts. These satanic people call anyone that preaches the true word, which is separation from evil, consecration unto good. They call this a cult or a sect, but they worship this one world organization and its cult leader, the Pope, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, or a soon to come Pope, as God, will soon sit in the temple of God in Jerusalem, showing himself that he is God. Second Thessalonians. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-10 They kneel and kiss his ring and feet, and call him Holy Father, which is forbidden in the Bible. They obey his every wish by calling us a cult who walk in the spirit and obey God's every wish. They have possibly committed the unpardonable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is never forgiven in this world nor in the world to come. Matthew 12, 31-32 But Satan does not care because he already has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Mark of the Beast. Satan wants you to spend eternity in hell with him. And to cause you to do this, look what he, through his state and federal government agencies, has cooked up for you now. Government enforcement of a law making it necessary for you to take a mark on your hand or your forehead in order to be allowed to buy or sell. This could be done invisibly by using laser beams. God calls this mark the mark of the beast. Revelation 19.20 The Vatican will use some pretty name for it. The mark of peace, love, unity, fellowship, etc. And God says, if we take this mark, we will go to hell. Revelation 14.9-11 the Pope, the super boss, and his federal and state government agencies will say that if we don't take this mark, we will be boycotted, can't buy or sell. I'll trust God to feed me, just as he fed the Hebrew children for 40 years in the Sinai desert. And God will do wonders again for his faithful followers who resist the Pope, his government agencies, at the mark. President Reagan has been bewitched too by the Vatican's craft, just as other world leaders have. This is obvious by his sudden move of sending our U.S. ambassador into the big Roman whorehouse, this cult's home office and general headquarters. Mr. President,
President, you're hanging around far too much with those Jesuit-trained One World Church ministers, and they're giving you some really bad advice. Is it the Vatican money and the big Vatican backup that's causing you to become part of this cult? Would you sell your eternal soul by joining yourself and our nation to the Antichrist for money and temporal power? The Lord asks, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own eternal soul? Mark 8.36 By having done this, you're now in big trouble with the living God. Lest you straighten up and fly right, and publicly recant your decision, so that the Lord and the public know where you stand exactly. Respectfully, Mr. President, in the name of Jesus, I say these things to you. We're at the end of time, and the day of the politician is over. We all have to let people know what's in us. The Bible says that he who receiveth not reproof from God's word is brutish. Proverbs 12.1 Mr. President and all you presidents and kings of the world, there is a judgment for all of us, and I believe it's coming real soon. seminary man. I am a true Israelite, washed in the blood of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, and sent by the Lord to preach Jesus crucified, resurrected, alive, and soon to return to this earth again. I have full authority from heaven to preach this. A true Israelite is one who believes God, which most Jews don't, because they reject the Messiah by rejecting the over 300 scriptures in the Old Testament telling of the Messiah. Some Israelites have converted to this sect, Roman Catholicism. The Vatican wanted them to become rabbis so that they could place them in the Israeli Knesset as spies. Some of these Roman Jesuit rabbis are there today as spies. In World War II, Poland was the strongest Vatican-controlled country. If the Vatican loves Jews so much, then and today, why did she allow the slaughter pens of the most Jews to be in Poland? Why did the Vatican forge the anti-Semitic document, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, blaming the Vatican's desires for world rulership on the Jews? Why did she blame the schemes of the Vatican's international bankers, Illuminati, and agentors on the Jews? And why does the Vatican have spies posing as rabbis in the Knesset if this anti-Semitic Roman Catholic cult loves the Jews so much? God says, O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Isaiah 3.12 the time of the Messiah's second coming is now, so repent or perish, which means accept the Messiah and the atonement, which is his blood, which he shed for your sins, or perish, which means you will go to hell if you don't. There are religious leaders who are leading millions of people to hell because of their connection with and exaltation of the Antichrist and his cult. That's something really, really special the Lord has blessed us with tonight. Now, Tony Palmer, I asked him to come give his testimony, and he's got a special message for us tonight. And I said, listen, next week I'm going to Kenneth Copeland Ministries Ministers Conference. I said there's going to be thousands of leaders, and these guys have their jets, they've got TV shows, and I said, they've got churches of 10,000, 2,000, 20,000. I said, these are big fishes. He said, why don't we make a video? Then, brother, 
brothers and sisters, mio fratello, mio vescovo fratello Tontana, il vostro compagno, il vostro raduno, con piacere vi dio un saluto. E famiglie che non si vogliono, famiglie che si uniscono e famiglie che si separano. E noi siamo un po', mi permetto la parola, separati separati perché i peccati ci hanno separati, i nostri peccati, eh, i malintesi nella storia, ma una lunga strada di peccato comunitario. Io ho la nostalgia che questa separazione finisca e ci dia la comunione, la nostalgia di quell'abbraccio di qua quando dobbiamo trovarci come fratelli facciamo crescere la nostalgia perché questo ci spingerà a trovarci a abbracciare e pregare al Signore perché ci unisca tutti e avanti siamo fratelli ci diamo spiritualmente questo abbraccio e lasciamo che il Signore finisca l'opera che lui ha incominciato. Vi benedico e io vi benedico. Di fratello a fratello. Un abbraccio. Grazie. Glory, glory, glory. Tony, thank you, sir. Come on, the man asked us to pray for him. And since we know not how to pray for him as we ought, other than to agree with him in his quest and in, in his heart, all of these leaders represent literally tens of thousands of people that love you, that believe God with you. We receive your blessing. It's very, very important to And we bless you with all of our hearts. All of us declare together. Be blessed. I'm telling you right now. Heaven is thrilled over this. <laughs> Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. First Timothy. For two. Some are Jesuit priests posing as Christians. They and their organizations have been rewarded handsomely from Rome because they have herded unsuspecting ignorant masses of their followers right into Satan's universal church, who has future plans for them all taking the mark of the beast in the name of Christian fellowship, brotherhood, peace, charisma and love. People have been easily led into this division of the Vatican's cult and think they are right because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Follow not God's word exactly. Because of this, God said he would send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. The whole Antichrist set up. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 12. These false leaders love the Roman Catholic money and political connections. It keeps them on national and international television. It helps build temporary little empires for themselves and unto their names, such as television networks, universities, villages, and many other vain business enterprises and supposed to be Christian fellowships. God says the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Proverbs 21.6 These leaders exalt the papacy and support it. What's your view of the current Pope? You know, the Pope has obviously been reaching out yeah. and has been a force of moderation in comparison to his yeah. predecessors. What do you I, make of I it? I think the Pope is fantastic. 
you know, I just think his tone, his humility, his, you know, I loved when he said the other day, you know, and it's the, it's it's our view too. We're not trying to, you know, make this a little bitty narrow thing. Anybody's welcome. We we may not agree, you know, 100% on doctrine and theology, but you know what? We're will the, the church. Catholic Church, our church, it's open for everybody. So I like his tone, not pushing people away, but I believe God's big and his mercy is very wide. They visit the Pope in Rome often and include the Roman Catholic clergy in most all of their social functions and allow them unashamedly on their television and radio broadcasts. They encourage President Reagan's moving our nation into the Antichrist, the Vatican. The Vatican promotes them, and they promote the Vatican, because they are just alike, liars. You can easily see them, and I think you know who they are. Just turn on your television set. Pray for their blind followers, because they trust in lying words that cannot profit. Jeremiah 7, 8. And for these blind leaders who will not speak the truth, they have taught their tongue to speak lies, Jeremiah 9, 5, who lead their blind, for Jesus said, both of them are going to fall into the ditch, Luke 6, 39. Jesus also said, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, Revelation 21, 8, and they shall not enter heaven. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Revelation 22.15 Because they are like him, Satan, who deceived Eve, and now the world. All death started with a lie. Jesus didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Matthew 10.34 He came to show us the difference between light and darkness, good and evil, truth and lie, the body of Christ and the Antichrist. He said, My sheep know my voice, and another will they not follow. John 10.3-5 Revelation 14.4 Do you hear Jesus' voice? or the voice of the Pope. Are you one of the sheep of Jesus, or a goat of the Antichrist? Do you like to hear lies, or the truth, God's word? Many of you have supported the Antichrist by tithing to these organizations. Support Christ, not the Antichrist, or you'll go to the same hell with him for supporting a lie. Secret Vatican agents disguised as Christians are going around to different Protestant churches to collect money to build the temple in Jerusalem for the Antichrist, Solomon's temple. And ignorant Christians who think it not ungodly to be deceived as was Eve, are giving them the money for it, instead of being discreet and godly and tithing to true Christian works. Jesus said, My people are destroyed. Go to hell for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6 Roman Catholic spokesmen are angry when the word of God is preached and say that they cannot believe that in this day and age there are still people preaching hatred, bias, and prejudice, etc. But what these Vatican ambassadors are really saying, though, is that they cannot believe in this day and age that there are still people preaching God's word, the truth, and that there are people that would have the guts to expose Satan, them, the backslidden denominational churches that have merged with the Vatican say that nowhere in the Bible does God or His Son, Christ Jesus, answer back or command their children to answer back. In the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, God, His Son, Christ Jesus, 
The patriarchs, prophets, disciples, and apostles answered Satan back on every point whenever his false doctrine came their way. We are commanded by Jesus to use the sword, the word of God, to defend and preserve the gospel by answering Satan back on every point with zeal and boldness. We are commanded to answer back Satan's fallacies, twisting of the word, as Jesus did when he answered back the devil on the Mount of Temptation. Matthew 4, 3 through 11. Paul, by the Holy Spirit, said, Preach the Word. All the Word. 2 Timothy 4, 2. Don't leave out the scriptures regarding the Antichrist, the false prophets, answering back, rebuking, and reproving. Jesus said that we live, go to heaven, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the living God. Matthew 4.4 4. This means the words about the Antichrist, the false prophets, etc. Because Jesus said, when we know the truth, all the truth, every word, the truth will set us free. John 8.32 But the Antichrist and his false prophets don't want you to be free because their master is Satan who likes to keep people in bondage. If they do not want people to be in bondage, then why do they become so angry when the whole of God's word is preached, which sets you free from Satan? And why would they call preaching all the word evil, hatred, bias, and prejudice if they're not from Satan? The Antichrist and his false prophets say that we are not to do anything concerning serving God with passion. They say keeping God's commandments, preaching, and doing God's word passionately is sin. Okay, I have to uh, end the show today. We're all out of time. I'll be back tomorrow, and we can finish this up tomorrow. So have a good evening and good night. The book of Revelation says... The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today. So you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The prophecy. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.